So what the heck am I doing in Utah of all places? What is this Florida man doing here? Because it is cold, but I can see my ride up ahead. And that is the whole point of what's going on right now. I'm actually picking up a cyber truck here. It's not mine. I wish it was. But I'm delivering this cyber truck to Florida from Utah. And then next week I'll need to drive it from Florida all the way to Long Beach, California. So that's what I'm doing this week and next week is taking this cyber truck all across the country and uh yeah let's jump into this thing so it looks like they got all the logos on it's for an event hence all the logos but that's craig right there from my uh, evject and this is our sweet ride this week all right so we're here in the sweet cyber truck i gotta be honest i'm probably driven the most miles in everybody else's cyber truck at this point <laughs> and not my own because i still don't have mine which is really sad but uh what is this all about so this truck needed to get to florida and you guys had uh something come yeah. up with the guy that was gonna deliver it right we had a transport service lined out lined up and they couldn't make it and so we're like who can drive this to florida and i'm like i bet I bet Bird and Tesla guy would be all about it. So 100% he's about it. So we reached out and he's uh, taking care of it for us. So we just picked him up at the Salt Lake Airport and we're gonna give him a bunch of EV jacks that he can test on the road. And uh, the event in Florida is actually the Rev Road launch party and the Celebration Exotic Car Festival in Celebration, Florida. So we're gonna have the truck down there and it's gonna be at the Daytona racetrack so you can come out and race the cyber truck on the daytona track which is gonna be pretty epic that's pretty cool but some pretty cool stuff happening and it's happening in florida not utah where this truck is so this has got to get there but also this truck has to then go to california is it the same type of event that, going on out there that is the socal owners club okay so that's with marty and the group out there and so we are sponsoring that event on april 13th so we'll be there with uh he'd be in full force well that's perfect then and uh could not beat the weather i was terrified coming in that it was going to be freezing but I'm, I'm pretty comfortable actually so i appreciate you bringing the good weather in yeah, on our well, behalf you're wearing shorts so we made sure we had it over 54 degrees <laughs> for you and you might recognize this guy from last year at the tesla takeover in california i'm sure people they don't forget the hair it's just naturally loose i look permanently windy <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome though. You put on quite the performance last year for everybody on the uh, breakaway device, right. which is pretty I cool. I, yeah. I train hard. I train hard for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. hoping Juilliard will see that. <laughs> I've got to get this by the, by the 4th? Yeah. Yeah. Be It'll be there the before fourth. the 4th. We'll beat that for sure, obviously. You know how it is. But I got to show you what we're looking at because it's absolutely beautiful out here. It's my first time in Utah and uh, it has not disappointed so far, weather and views. So I was probably supposed to leave like four hours ago, if I'm being honest, but it's just, there's so much fun to be had. And uh, the hospitality was much appreciated in town. So um, what we're working on now is getting the cyber truck out, I think. And uh, we're about to embark on this journey. I got to look at what time it is. Hang on. What time is it? It is 8.11. So it's, t so it's basically 10 after eight right now. And um, once the truck gets out here, I'll punch in the address and we'll see uh, what we have in front of us. Now, the thing is there's three routes and two of them are kind of the north route, uh, but one of them goes through Denver. One of them goes just north of Denver. And then there's the Southern route. And the Southern route kind of goes down into the north half of Texas until it gets down to I-10. And I've done I-10 a bajillion times at this point. And uh, so I haven't really decided. Now, 
on the Apple Maps, it says that actually going through Denver is the fastest route. So I'm not sure how that all works out. Every time that I've simulated this on a better route planner and all that, certainly going the southern route should be the quickest, but we're gonna have to plug it in, see what that's all about, and uh, see what our state of charge is. Just kidding, it's now 8.45 and I'm ready to go this time for real though, because I'm sitting in the truck, buckled in, and I got my settings saved, we're ready to go. We're at 41%, so um, I'm only gonna be driving like an hour and a half, I think, which actually that's not too bad. An hour and a half, uh, 86 miles, I'll show you. So the routes, like I told you, sure enough, it wants us to go through Denver, and I confirmed again on um, my phone as if I wasn't in an electric car, it also recommends going through Denver. Let me show you uh, this trip as a whole uh, so you can see what we got in front of us. All right, so here we are in uh, Salt Lake City, just on the south side of Salt Lake City. Although you guys are probably saying, oh my God, this is not Salt Lake City. We are south of Salt Lake City and um, we're basically gonna have to go this route a little bit farther south and then Grand Junction through the mountains uh, to Denver, Colorado. And um, that route all the way to St. Louis before cutting down um, into Florida. Now, interestingly enough, at some point we were going to catch my old route from Indiana, somewhere close to Nashville, I guess, yeah, once we hit Nashville, then we'll be on 65 or 75, excuse me, down to uh, home. So that's cool. Pretty, uh, pretty long drive. I don't have the full mileage here of how far this is, but it's about, I don't know, 2,400 miles or something. So I have reset a fresh trip here for Orlando, zero miles, ready to go. This particular long range all wheel drive has 3,343 miles on it. So. This first stretch here will get us to Price, Utah, and then Parachute, Colorado thereafter. That's 2.30 in the morning uh, in Parachute, Colorado. So probably about the point I'm going to call it for the night. So we'll just have to get rolling here. I'm excited to see how this thing does efficiency-wise. We'll be keeping a close eye on that. But I think two days starting tomorrow two days so two and a half days to make this trip i think we can make it so why is this truck even going to florida um it's a good question and why does it say ev jacked all over it the thing that's important is there's a race in florida and it is for make a wish foundation so basically kids who are very very sick they get to make a wish and one of the events that gets thrown on every year in celebration Florida is um, this race and what it allows kids to do is come out to Daytona at the track and um, whatever car whatever supercar that is there that they want to ride in they're gonna get to do that and uh, it's pretty cool so this truck is headed to Florida to give one heck of a ride to a bunch of kids um, and that's pretty cool and then after that like I've said before we then next week will be taking this truck to California I'm gonna go all the way to Long Beach. So um, we'll get to that later though on another video. But for now, enough chit chat. Um, we just need to get moving, honestly. So we've got an hour and a half, 86 miles in it. We're at 41% now, says we'll arrive at 7%. So let's uh, get moving, either about 10, 20 p.m. And uh, we'll catch you when we get there. ourselves a little bit of a situation nothing too crazy but I have been watching the temperature closely it's 37 degrees and uh, just a moment ago I saw it is officially snowing um, there's still drizzle but if you look I don't know if you can tell on camera but there is definitely snow coming down with the rain which is not great because I have no idea about my surroundings other than it is pitch black on both sides and I know I'm in the mountains. That's all I know. So this is, uh, this has not been so much fun so far. 
probably really see the snow after this car goes by and the brights go back on. Let's see. Let's see if you can see that snow on the camera. Let's see. And maybe you can. I can see it. But yeah, not so much fun. All right. I know you can definitely see that because now it's like really starting to pick up and we're down to 35 degrees. So it is getting colder by the moment, which is uh, no BN. Not only for the fact that it's cold, but I'm really worried about slippery roads. That is uh, what's on my mind at the moment. So keeping a close eye on this, but uh, not having a lot of fun. I can tell you that. All right, I'm not gonna lie, this is really dangerous. So what's gonna happen here is as soon as this car comes around the bend, the auto brights will go off. And with their headlights coming at me, I can kind of see the road a little bit better but it's an issue with the light bar, I think, because once these cars are out of sight, wait till you see how blinding this is with the snow here in just a moment. All right, so all the cars are gone now. This is just with the light bar. There's brights, there's just light bar. And then compare that to when there's no snow. It's very, very different. I, uh, I have a really hard time seeing up here in the mountains anyways with no other light sources other than the light bar on the front of this truck brights or no brights didn't really have much of a difference so that uh that kind of scares me a bit about uh, snow i don't know if that's something that could be looked at or how to deal with that all right so good news is uh we've arrived here um uh, there is some bad news but i'll get to that later for now the only thing that matters is all right 86 miles and uh 43 kilowatt hours 496 one hour per mile this has no bearing on what kind of efficiency we should expect because we're in the mountains obviously um that was not fun and I'll get to that in a minute, but at the moment I want to get plugged in and it wants us to charge here for an hour and 10 minutes, of course. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, however, there's a one little caveat to that and I will get to that. But first what I want to see is, so uh, that would get us to parachute and then Edwards would be right before Denver. Um, I'm trying to see what time I would be in Denver tomorrow if I uh, stop along this route. So uh, let's just get plugged in. I'll get right back to this. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'll explain it to you and uh, we'll go from there. There's like not much here. There is, it is in the parking lot of a Holiday Inn Express, which is nice. Um, and there's a Dairy Queen across the street down there somewhere. There's a gas station, but it's not like a lot right here. To be expected i guess and you've probably seen me use this before on the channel but this is a evject from evject uh, but what it is is a breakaway device so in an emergency um, as you probably know at this point you cannot uh, disconnect the charger without getting out of the vehicle and physically removing it what this device does is it allows you to be connected to the supercharger and without getting out of your vehicle you can stop charging on the screen put the car in drive and leave in an emergency rather than having to get out and uh, unplug so in an emergency this thing will break in half and the one half will stay in your vehicle until you get somewhere safe to take it out the other half will stay on the charging cable and it will actually kind of help prevent damage to this handle because this is what's going to hit the ground not the uh, charging cable but it allows you to get out of a tough situation in a bad spot and uh, i'll show you how uh, we do this so i've only got one hand here so let's see if we can oh and it's a v2 okay well um hang on okay so, I mean, it just slides over essentially, but just make sure it's on there good. And when we stick this into the charge port, this little lever here is going to go up and that's going to allow us to manually push this up and you hear it click. And with this in place, now it's locked in place. When you hit unlock charge port or stop charging, that's what happens. So what it does is that stops the supercharger from doing its thing. It's no longer charging, no longer energized. And, uh... That way it can be safely removed. So there we go. 
Oh man, I can hear everything clicking. This is gonna be interesting. This is a V2, unfortunately, which is why we gotta be here so long. So no issues ramping up to V2 speeds here at this charger, which is nice. So this will get us to Parachute, Colorado, but here's the thing, um, I'm very tired. I was up at uh, 6 a.m. Eastern this morning. It is now 11 p.m. Mountain Time, I believe. Um, so let me show. It's one o'clock in the morning. Um, it's super dark, and the unexpected snow um, that made me very uncomfortable because I'm so tired. I can't see what's around me because it's so dark. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check out that hotel right there and see if I can get a bed and uh, get some sleep because it's really not safe to be as tired as I am at the moment. And uh, I hate to admit it because I like to plow through this stuff, but it's just not safe. So for one of the few times in my life, I am gonna stop. I'm gonna stop and I'm going to check into a hotel. It's not even midnight, like this is crazy for me, but uh, I know better and uh, I need to always make sure that I'm being safe. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to let this thing charge up while I deal with all of that. But I think that's probably as far as I'm going to go. 86 miles, <laughs> like pretty pathetic. I know. Um, but it's just better to pick this up in the morning. I'm going to deal with all that and uh, I'll come back to you here in just a little bit when I figure everything out. And, uh, yeah, that's the sit rep. So the good news is they had a room and they had a really good rate available. So I'm going to stay here for the night. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk across the street since I've got some time here and uh, get a drink for the evening and maybe some dinner. Probably need some dinner. So going to do that. <laughs> I'm like, I might be a little too tired. I can't even keep my thoughts straight, but I really don't like this truck out here by itself because everybody's coming from everywhere. It just makes me nervous. All right, enough talking. I'm gonna go do that. All right, so here's what is happening and why it wants us to charge so long. So if we look at the map here, um, there's parachute all the way over here. And that is actually um, 209 miles, three and a half hours from where we're at. There are a couple of chargers in between here and there. However, um, this one here, uh, or I'm sorry, this one here is a uh, 120. So this is like an OG charger, like an old school charger. And right here we have another v2 a 150 kilowatt charger but it's only like 55 miles away so that's why it wants us to do this one long charge so what i'm going to do i'm actually not probably going to add chargers um to split this up what i'm going to do instead i'm going to let this charge to 80 percent now and then in the morning i'll come down here move the truck plug it in and get the other 20 percent or whatever it's requesting to get all the way to um parachute colorado so i think that's going to be the plan i think that makes the most sense uh for right now and uh, i did get a room so hotel everything set up so i'm gonna let this thing charge up to 80 percent i'm gonna unplug and i'll pick this right back up in the morning all right and then once we're done charging how do we remove this thing well the same way you do a normal charging session you're just going to press the button and remove the whole thing so press the button thing disengages and remove and that's it and then all you got to do is just separate the two they're not connected in any other way all right well good morning i got such amazing rest and despite the way my hair looks whatever i slept really good and this morning, um, I suspect there's games being played against the Florida guy. Florida man and cold games don't go well together. All right, this is really weird. I just came downstairs, get ready to put the bags in here, go over to the charger. All the windows are cracked open. Why? What is happening? So I think somebody's trying to play a trick on me. Anyways, um, I did get the truck topped off this morning. I'm uploading a video and that's the only thing stopping me from going, but it's taking forever. So I'm tempted to just 
upload bits at a time, I guess. I don't know, but I want to show you what's in front of us. I did add um, a stop that's not on the screen, but I'm going to um, see some folks in Denver uh, on my way through for an early dinner, I guess. So um, let me uh, flip this around and show you what we got. We're here over in wherever we're at, Price, Utah, I believe. Uh, it does uh, want us to stop now in Grand Junction, which is that 120. And I'll keep an eye on it because if possible, I will go to Parachute, which is somewhere over here. I don't know. Somewhere in here, <clears throat> right there. And parachute's right there. And I will uh, stretch it to there if we can. It's 200 miles. We're at 95%. And the whole trip here this morning will get us to Denver somewhere, I think around four o'clock. So it says Edwards around two, um, Lyman around six. So I'm thinking it's in between those two and about four o'clock ish for where we're going. And then if we weren't stopping, I would be targeting probably Lawrence, Kansas or somewhere between um, Abilene in Lawrence, Kansas, somewhere in there is probably what I'd be going for. Now, with the stop, I'll probably have to target somewhere in here. And then that would leave us with the rest of this trip here. And if we drove nonstop, let's see, it is 9 a.m. for reference. So we would get, there's 24 hours. Um, so a little less than about six hours shy of two days of driving and charging um, is what we have to go. So all day today, all day tomorrow, um, I think that's about right. So Saturday, Sunday, I might be home a little bit sooner than I expected, but I don't think it's going to work out that way. I think what's going to happen is it'll be all day today, Saturday, all day today, uh, tomorrow, Sunday. And then on Monday, it'll be at least a half day is my guess is how this is going to end up working out. Uh, but I'm going to try to move and get this uh, internet to work just a little bit faster and see if I can get it to upload a little bit quicker than what it's doing right now. Otherwise, I'm just going to connect to the hotspot and uh, let it slow upload the whole way in the mountains with no service. So we'll figure it out one way or the other, but I don't want to just sit here waiting for that to upload the whole time but uh two hours and 17 minutes 163 miles to uh grand junction for a quick top off if not parachute thereafter if we can uh, stretch it there i think it's another 40 ish miles so just depends on elevation and uh, temperature it's currently 40 which is much better than it was last night in the snow so i'll uh i'll update you here in a little bit Okay, so this is a crazy story, but essentially in my time in Utah, there happened to be a cyber truck that didn't get delivered. And after requesting approval, thanks to um, the local team who um, was willing to ask, they have said they are willing to assign that cyber truck VIN to me. So it was like right place at the right time kind of thing. And although I'm 170 miles into this trip, I actually need to turn around. <laughs> I still don't have confirmation um, that everything's good to go for pickup. They want me to pick up today. So this still could just not happen and I could be wasting my time, but I have to turn around. Um, and if everything works out, I will be towing my cyber truck back to Florida with this cyber truck, which will be kind of cool. So that's going to change this entire video, obviously. But I need to just turn around and um, at least start, you know, get back to that last charger and start charging. And um, that way I'm kind of making progress that way, but not losing too much time going back. And so we'll just, we'll start one step at a time. 
I'm just going to head back. I'll show you on the map what this is all about. Okay, so like I said, I'm 170 miles into this trip, 485 one hour per mile, and I just got on to 70. So I'm at a good like spot in this trip where now I'm going to take 70 for a long time. But what I'm going to have to do here is turn around and I'm going to have to go back to price. I'm at 60% and I left it like 95% or something. So I've got plenty of juice to get there and it says we'll get there at 25%. And then I added Provo as the uh, charging stop that I'm headed to. Uh, it's actually, I don't know exactly where it is. It's somewhere around here where the Tesla store is. So I'm going to, uh, head back an hour and 17 minutes and 85 miles to the charger at the hotel that I stayed the night. So let's start with that and, um, see how this craziness unfolds. All right, well, welcome back to where we were this morning, um, several, several hours ago. Uh, so it ended up being 168 miles there and back, 489 one hour per mile, not too bad. Still not a good number to go off of because we're in the mountains and um, elevation changes, whatever. So it says like 10 minutes, but the store is actually a little bit north of there. And I'll punch in that actual address um, of where that store is at and uh, get this thing charged up to not have to stop obviously at Provo. So I'll add that as the destination, charge up a bit and uh, head straight to that store, but it should be about an hour and a half away from where we're at right now. So let's uh, go ahead and get this EV jack hooked up and uh, start charging. All right, got our EV jack on. And now that you can see it in the daytime, here's our little lever down here. And doing that activates. And then we will wait for the charge to kick on. And again, this is just a V2, so we're not going to get any crazy great speeds here. But um, it did go all the way up to like 148 last night, even in the cold. So we were getting maximum out of this charger, which is good. And it looks like it's headed right back up there again. So we'll let this thing charge up uh, probably closer to like 15 minutes or so. So I'll take the moment to, um, there's a gas station over there where I can grab something to drink and uh, use the restroom real quick. And then uh, I'll come back here and uh, we'll uh, keep going. All right, so uh, after sitting here and discussing things with people, I think I'm just gonna have to go to the store um, to figure out what's going on. Can't really get much for answers, so gotta just make the hour, 24 minute drive. Be there with plenty of charge. Um, we're at 81% right now. Gonna unplug and uh, make that 85 mile trip through the mountain. So since it was hard to see last night, probably it might be a little bit easier to see how we get this device off. And it is pretty simple. The same way you would, you would just press this thing on latches, pull the whole thing off, and then you can just separate the two, which is hard to do with one hand. Sorry, but that's it. So here's the deal. You get a picture of the idea. Don't worry, this poor Model Y is not being crushed. Uh, we do have the front jack down, but this is the idea. This is what I was here for. I was going to use this Cybertruck to tow possibly my Cybertruck. Unfortunately, I didn't get much communication uh, to suggest other than coming back here. So I added 400 miles of the trip by 
doubling back and um, yeah, I don't know that I have a truck. So I'm uh, super thankful for everything that's happened to me in my life, especially with Tesla and all the wonderful things that I've been able to do. So I don't want to sound ungrateful. I am, um, I am a little disappointed to add that kind of time and uh, miles to the trip and getting all this excited and then the letdown of it. So I'm going to wait it out here for probably another hour, see what happens. So wish me luck. All right, so we're doing some practice runs here, strapping it down, getting a good setup, getting it balanced. That was a big thing. And um, this is balanced. So this truck is very close to 50-50 and you can see we're slightly forward of center. Um, but we were watching uh, the tongue weight up here before it was hooked up to, or before the weight was on the actual car, there was almost none. So it was well balanced on this uh, uh, trailer. So we're gonna do a trial run in the safety of a parking lot away from traffic. We're not gonna go on the highway or any streets or anything, but this will be a good test run to see how this works.